Hey guys, it's Claire and welcome to In The Real. This is the first episode of 2023 and I'm so excited to get back to podcasting. I have a really special guest. We have Artisan Red, but I know her as my cousin Maddie. Hey, how's it going? It's good. I'm, I'm so excited to talk to you. I've had the idea, I think, since the wedding to invite you onto the podcast really? and it just hasn't happened. Well, here you are. That's awesome. I know. Here we are. Yeah. She's having a baby now, so... Yeah. Life's crazy. My first question for you is, I, I want to know, like, what's your background with art and how did you get into it? Okay, so I guess I've always been creative, right? But I didn't really start painting till about, um, maybe about two years ago. And how I started painting was, I was going through a lot of things. I was dealing with a lot of depression and not really having an actual hobby or something that I'm passionate about. And I decided to buy canvas and bright neon paint. And like something like called me to do that. I don't know what it was, what this idea in my head was for or why, because I never really painted before. Right? So I just like started without even knowing really how to paint. I just put the canvas up against the tree and like just like threw paint against the canvas and uh, it looked cool, but it made me feel alive. It made me feel empowered, inspired for the first time in a very long time. And people told me how they liked my art, but they told me I should share it with the world. Because, and I realized that other people need to see this because there's not enough light and, and color in the world. And what, what style do you classify your art to be? Because it's, it's very unique. I ca categorize it as uh, abstract splash art, right? So it's my own form of fluid art. And what I think fluid art is, is researched videos on YouTube of different styles styles and it was combining a paint onto canvas and letting the the paint drip and flow to create the sort of like creation and what the style means to me is I tend I can intentionally pick colors that express how I feel right because uh, I like thinking in colors Right. And I can use those colors to make a creation that's abstract, that has, is open to interpretation. My, there's my interpretation and then there's the viewer's interpretation. And that's always right. It's not wrong. That's my style. I do want to know, this is like for me, how do you do it? Because I mean, these, you have all these cool paintings and I'm just like, so what, how, what, how, how does that work? How, how do you do that? <laughs> It's the best way I can ask that. Sometimes there's a vision or I get an urge to paint and I see something in my head and I want it to come to fruition, but I know when I paint, it's not always going to end up like that. So I, I tend to have no expectations because when a painting turns out the way it does, that's how it's meant to turn out. And so how I, how I do it is, or there's techniques that I'll use. If I pour the paint directly onto the canvas, I'll pour the paint one on top of each other or all around, all scattered, it doesn't matter however I'm feeling in the moment. And I sometimes what I'll do, one technique is I'll pick up the canvas and let the paint drip, let the pattern form. I let the paint do its thing, right? I let my vulnerabilities and like what I'm feeling with the paint move itself. And it creates something. And when the painting's dry, there's like figures that that I can see or that other people can see, like people, and it comes to life. And sometimes I'll use like a cake knife to spread the paint, make lines, or I'll use a dustpan, pour the paint directly on the dustpan and let the, the paint flow like that. So, and I also, I teach uh, painting classes too at my art studio. So I'll teach people how, how to paint in my style. And it's it's uh, funny because the paintings won't turn out exactly the same as when I do them. But it's beautiful to see what other people can create on their own if I guide them. Yeah, and I think it's cool because you can't mess it up. No, right. Yeah, I, yeah, I like that. You can't mess it up. And if, for example, I or you don't like the way something looks, what I'll do is I'll 
uh, when it's you know still wet, I'll pour more paint on top of it, and then it's to my liking. Because for me, I have such bad OCD that I'll be drawing and I'll keep, I keep erasing stuff, and I'm like, I have to fix this, I have to fix this, and then it looks worse. <laughs> yeah, no, for, yeah. There's for me, there's no uh, mistakes in painting. What is it's it's supposed to be? You know, I just let it let it be as it is. What works for me is allowing myself to to feel free and realize I can be imperfect and yet it still turns out perfect is there anyone in the art world well known or not that you look up to i really admire this painter named uh colin shop his style is really unique it's it's abstract it's not like traditional fluid art where you have cups and stuff like that it's it's uh, enhanced i admire him because at first I didn't understand him. I was confused by all the paint that he used. I, I was angry because he used so much paint and I didn't, I had a lack. I, in my head, I had a lack of resources, right? Like a lack of money. And mm -hmm. I saw him and other artists that had so much supplies. And I'm like, why are you using so much and wa wasting it but then but then i realized it's not a, a lack of resources issues because there are so many to go around it's a lack in my mind there's a lack of, of abundance of not feeling abundant myself right because the the sources and everything resources will always will, will always come i always find stuff out in the in the world to paint on and I realized it's just my mindset. It's why I was confused by these, by him, by these people at first because it was a mindset. But I am abundance. We people are abundant, right? And like I attract that. Yeah. Yeah. We all want things that we can't quite understand and grasp, and we just keep wanting and wanting. And we just need to realize we have the things we need. Exactly. We have it in ourselves, like the power that we hold is within us, right? And we can't, I can't bring people down. I've learned to, to lift myself up and lift others up because we, we all need each other to, to grow, I think. And you do something really interesting. You do something that you call live painting. Please yeah. talk all about that and what that is and how you do that. In the last two years, since I've been in Austin, I've been doing art shows, right? Where I bring my work to places of markets in Austin and show my work. And at first, I just displayed my art for people to see, you know, talk about it, show my paintings. And then I started live painting. What I'll do is bring blank canvases to shows and bring my table, paints, and whatever tools I need. And I'll, I'll paint in front of people. And why I do this is because I get to provide an experience for other people. People get to watch and enjoy or ask questions and see my these paintings here like that I make come to life right in front of them. And it's it's interesting people like ask questions all the time, how do you do this? Or wow, I can see this in your art and I can talk to them on spot about it. So that's why I do it. It's engaging. It's an ex I'm providing an experience. And I think life is about providing experiences for people. And you, didn't you do this for a band for a little while? Yeah, so I did it for uh, Audic Empire. They went around to local bars and I went with them for a while and I live painted for them while they were actually singing at shows and it was fun as I think music and art they go together it's movement it's fluid my art is fluid and it's I think it's just a beautiful mix for for music and art to go together because for me it made me it makes me feel something whatever emotion like joy and I can share that with people in the audience while I'm uh, creating they can hear music and then see a creation being made and in tune with with the music and i want to do that for the rest of my life i want to paint live 
and travel and see the world and let these experiences that I provide, provide them for everyone and touch everyone emotionally where I go. Do you have like a timeline or a goal of where you want to get to in art? I feel like it's hard for me. I don't to predict or to to focus too much on the future. I do have a vision of of where I want to be. Uh, I want to in the next couple of years. I want to live off of making art. It's my dream. I'll provide like uh, businesses at my studio, painting businesses, teaching art classes somewhere in the meantime, and save up. But I, I just want to see the world, and I want to I want to help heal other people with my art. What do you so want that, people to take away from your art? I want people to take away that there is still light in this world, even though it can be really dark. There is light. There is good people. I want people to know that through my art, I want to show and give love to others. What I really want is. I want to provide so much like warmth and happiness and light that like that we don't totally forget about the dark, but we don't live there anymore. It feels right. Yeah, to live this way and make art for the rest of my life. It feels it feels like it's my purpose. And I mean, you art is a big thing for you. But in school, you're studying something about video games. Do you want to talk about that a little bit? I'm about to graduate. It's my last semester. I'm studying uh, video game development. So I went to Texas A&M for two years, moved to Austin, took a break to focus on working on myself. I had different majors. I had like four different majors at A&M. I was biomedical science, uh, psychology major, special education. Then I came here. When, as soon as I got here, I, I had to figure out what, before I got here, I had to figure out what I wanted to do. I still didn't really know. And I knew I, I liked video games when I was growing up and I wanted a creative major. So I thought like, combining the two, like art and creativity and video games, um, I could get a stable job. And I realized I really like expressing myself physically through art. And I can still use this art degree, uh, maybe as an art teacher. It doesn't, I don't have, I'm not confined to one job, to one area for the rest of my life. Society has pushed like this whole college job, like as soon as you get out of high school, you have to know what you want to do situation onto people. And not everybody's built like that. Not everyone knows what they want to do immediately and not everyone can just jump into something. And I realized that's okay. It's okay to not have your whole life figured out. We're not, I'm not programmed or meant to, to, to know that. I can't know the future. Like what I know is now and I need to learn to, to have been learning to be more present in the mo moment and figure out what it is that's my purpose and pursue that. Yeah, and whatever is meant to happen, and I have to put in the work and the, and the action, it will find me. Is there anything else that you want people to know about your art, about you, anything like that? It, my, my dream, like I said, is I just want to live off art because it has literally saved my life. I was, like I said, I was like depressed for a long time, and I didn't have... A purpose to live. I didn't want to. I was lonely, like afraid of everything. I didn't know how to make friends really or build a community around me. And by making art and putting in the action, I, I have I, I have made a community. I have with the studio that that I created, I have brought people together through art. I have found like my purpose. I like myself, like I love myself even. People have told me that I have inspired them to create, like create art again. After years of not creating, it has given me like a reason to keep going, you know? And I want to, what I want is to, to continue to, to grow this love and this passion for art and touch not just one life, which is very important, but millions, like like thousands of like millions of lives. I want this to 
to like be like a revolution of love and art. You're a very colorful human being and your whole Instagram is like the most colorful thing. It looks like a rainbow threw up on your Instagram and I love it. Is color something that's really important to you? Yes, color is something that's so important to me. And it, and and why? Because like I said, I lived in the dark for so long. Like I would like sit in my room with the lights off or get ready with the lights off. Sometimes I still do. And I lived in such black and white darkness and internally for so long that all these the colors that I wear, the colors that I paint just explode out of me because that's who I am. That's who I was supposed to be. And I have from my childhood till now I've come back to that colorful person because I lost that and in the, in the I lost that in the in the meantime. And colors are so important to me because I, it fills me with emotion that I numbed for a very long time. Through expressing myself by colors, I can see the world in a clearer way. I mean, I've known you since I was born, and I've just seen you grow so much, especially in the last couple of years doing art and stuff, because you used to be like the most quiet bookworm person I've ever met, getting straight A's, yeah. like all that. And then, you know, you, you discovered art, and now you're just like this loud bubble of sunshine, and I just love it. And I still get straight A's. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, art has allowed me to come out of my shell and, and speak up, finally speak up for myself and say what I want to say and not feel sorry about it because it, that's how I feel respectfully. And I feel like we all have so much to say and through my art and through creating. I have this voice, but then I can help people find their voice because what people have to say it's important i mean I that is all the questions i have for you is there anything else you want to talk about i just want to say like thank you claire for um letting me um come on your podcast and and speak about myself and my art and if you uh, want to follow my instagram it's at artist in red artist underscore i n underscore red underscore yeah Thank you. Claire. All of Maddie's links will be down below. You can check her out. I recommend. She's so talented. And her Instagram's very fun and colorful and like a rainbow threw up on it. You will have the best time. <laughs> but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. It's the first episode of 2023. I have some really special guests coming on and I can't wait to take you along.